Game of Thrones has always been a pretty sprawling TV show, and plenty of material has ended up on the cutting room floor. But though these scenes were deleted, they're still fascinating to explore, especially since these moments could have subtly changed the course of the story or at least our perception of events. Let's explore some of the more substantial moments that never made the final cut. The execution of Littlefinger was one of the most shocking moments in the season 7 finale. But how did Sansa and Arya Stark come to learn about his whole lifetime of crimes? In an interview with Variety, actor Isaac Hempstead Wright, who portrays Bran Stark, revealed that he shot a deleted sequence with Sophie Turner, who portrays Sansa. In the scene, Sansa reportedly consulted with Bran just ahead of Littlefinger's trial. As you may recall, Sansa was convinced her sister Arya was out to assassinate her in order to become the Lady of Winterfell. Arya suspected the same of Sansa and it was all thanks to that master manipulator, Littlefinger. Viewers were sweating buckets watching the season 7 finale, since it looked like one of the Stark sisters might kill the other. But then Sansa and Arya flipped the script, sentencing Littlefinger to death, revealing their feud to be an elaborate ruse. Thank you for all your many lessons, Lord Baelish. I will never forget them. It was a big twist, but it seemed to leave a bit of a plot hole behind too. How were the Stark children suddenly so certain of Littlefinger's history of manipulation and betrayal? According to Hempstead Wright, a deleted scene from the episode would have cleared up any ambiguity. It revealed exactly how the Stark sisters learned of Littlefinger's schemes, and it would have let audiences see how Sansa and Arya arrived at the decision to execute him. In the deleted scene, Bran uses his newfound abilities as a three-eyed raven to peer into Littlefinger's past, unearthing every underhanded thing it ever done in his quest for power. Hempstead Wright told Variety, The story was that it suddenly occurred to Sansa that she had a huge CCTV department at her discretion and it might be a good idea to check with Bran first before she guts her own sister. Though audiences can kind of still fill in the blanks without the scene, its inclusion would have threaded the plot together with a little more clarity. It also would have shed more light on Bran's immense powers, giving us a much stronger impression of how extraordinary his gifts really are. Bran's ability to access the history of man and the secrets of Westeros is an astonishing skill and a potentially powerful weapon. As was made clear in Season 8, Bran's knowledge that Jon is the rightful heir to the Seven Kingdoms sparked an unfortunate chain of events, one that's played an important part in Daenerys Targaryen's descent into madness. Sansa has undergone a remarkable transformation since we first met the dreamy young girl looking forward to marriage, and one person who's had a major hand in her development is Sandor Clegane, otherwise known as the Hound. Throughout much of Game of Thrones, he seemed alternately drawn to and repulsed by Sansa's innocence, frequently calling her Little Bird with a mixture of sweetness and condescension. No, Little Bird, I won't hurt you. Of course, the Hound uses that nickname again in the fourth episode of Season 8, when the dynamics between the two are remarkably different. It's a scene that highlights just how much Sansa has grown throughout the course of Game of Thrones. <sighs> You've changed, little bird. Yet one deleted scene all the way back in Season 2 depicts a Sansa who's already prepared to stand up to the Hound. Sing. I don't know any songs. Not anymore. Instead of a quivering waif, we see a young woman who's perfectly willing to stand her ground. And perhaps that was the problem. The scene of her standing up for herself, even a little bit, could have been seen as too much too soon, as far as Sansa's development is concerned. Sansa and the Hound's Season 8 reunion certainly wouldn't have been half as bittersweet if she'd already demonstrated the potential for such strength way back in Season 2. Tormund has always been right at the center of the tension between the Night's Watch and the Wildlings. He's helpful to the Night's Watch, but he's not sentimental about their history. He's committed to being part of the Free Folk, but he's also Jon Snow's friend. When Jon was the commander of the Night's Watch, he welcomed Tormund and other Wildlings across the wall. That brought the tension to its boiling point, resulting in the slaying of Jon Snow. In a deleted scene from Season 5 that would have taken place before Jon's death and resurrection, Sir Alistair Thorne, one of Snow's eventual killers, verbally spars with Tormund. He lets Tormund know just how much he distrusts him and how little he likes housing him. Tormund gruffly replies, He must no longer be in charge then. It's a moment of intense foreshadowing, but had the scene been included in the show, it might have made Tormund seem partially responsible for Jon Snow's murder, however involuntarily. Though he didn't wield a dagger, his aggressive needling of Alistair might have been perceived as a straw that broke the camel's back. Audiences might have blamed Tormund for Sir Alistair's subsequent actions. Though the scene is appropriate for that era of the show, it may well have cast a pall over an alliance that has since helped shape the future of Westeros. Game of Thrones minds conflict from absolutely every angle. Life against death, woman against man, religion against cynicism. Another major clash? The ongoing animosity between the nobility and common folk of Westeros. 
The prostitute Shay had a pretty long run on Game of Thrones, but her luck eventually ran out. First, there was her damaging testimony against Tyrion Lannister, who then tragically killed her when he encountered her in his father's bed. It was tragic, and it was extreme, but a deleted scene between Shay and Bronn reveals a far more tender side to the conflict, and it might change how you view Shay's actions. In the scene, Bronn commiserates with Shay as a fellow commoner. These people, even the good ones, they use us as their police. <laughs> And when we're no longer any use, they spit us out. It's the kindest we've ever seen, Bron, and the moment emphasizes the difficult position that Shay was in. We have to adapt to circumstances, is what I'm saying. Learn some new tricks. With this scene in mind, what happens between Shay and Tyrion becomes even more complicated. Yes, she did something awful, but this scene dares to ask, what choice did she have? Grand Maester Pycelle was always a conniving man. Even when acting like a doddering old fool, he delighted in playing passive-aggressive games and he never missed an opportunity to dismiss and disrespect Tyrion. But his detestable nature often went completely unnoticed by other characters on Game of Thrones. It even went unnoticed by many people watching the show. But a deleted scene between Pycelle and Tywin Lannister would have changed that dynamic enormously. Pycelle interrupts Tywin while he's fishing, and as usual, he's playing the fool in order to seem non-threatening and inept. Unimpressed by the charade, Tywin cuts off Pycelle's babbling. Stop it. Am I the only one to see through this performance? This certainly changes the dynamic between Pycelle and Tywin. It also suggests that most of the other people in King's Landing are comparably daft. The scene doesn't just make Tywin seem more formidable, it also changes how we see Pycelle. Now he seems like a dangerous and devious man, instead of a mild annoyance. In the second season of Game of Thrones, Daenerys learns an important lesson in trust after she's ferociously betrayed by her handmaiden, Daria. Khaleesi, please. He said you'd never leave Karth alive. Come. Daria meets a wholly unfortunate end, with Daenerys sealing her inside a vault to die, which is inarguably kind of a harsh way to take somebody out. As it turns out, we didn't even see the worst of Daria's actions. In a deleted scene from season 2, she gleefully strangles Daenerys' handmaiden Eri to death. Of course, that scene effectively turns Daria into a far more insidious character, and it makes her betrayal seem so much worse than what we ever saw on screen. The White Walkers were always a major threat in Game of Thrones, but it was also a major challenge to get the people of Westeros to believe the threat was real. Jon Snow spent an enormous chunk of screen time arguing about the Walkers, though few people were ever willing to take his warnings or Bran's visions to heart. A crippled boy claims to have seen dead men on the march beyond the wall. Thanks to the magical help of a raven with three eyes. Yes, it is a bit much. But in a deleted Season 2 scene that we never got to see, it's revealed that Tywin Lannister took the White Walkers quite seriously from early on. After hearing stories of corpses with blue eyes and their bone white masters, Tywin discusses sending an envoy to Mance Raider, and then the king beyond the wall. This plot development would have seriously changed that perception of Tywin, and it would have considerably raised the stakes for the Lannisters as a whole. Had the scene aired, we would have seen the first major house start preparing for battle with the White Walkers far ahead of time, while pretty much everyone else was too busy being skeptical. Renly's death was a linchpin of several plot threads, Melisandre's dark and complex magic, the Tyrell's insatiable thirst for power, and the War of the Five Kings. Renly had the charm and charisma that Stannis lacked. He had the backing of a large and fruitful house, and brilliant women like Marjorie at his side. At this point, it's all too easy to forget what a genuine threat he was. But above and beyond that, Renly was Loras' lover, and the deleted scene from Season 2 illustrates their love with a tenderness that's rather unusual for the world of Game of Thrones. In the scene, Loras laments his inability to stop Renly's murder, confiding in his sister Marjorie that he feels somewhat responsible for his lover's death. <laughs> Marjorie urges Loras to turn his attention to their family. We have to think of our house now. The whole country's at war. This scene makes the Tyrell's emotional stakes all the more clear. It's easy to see Marjorie as conniving above all else, but this unusually touching moment illustrates that she still very much loves her brother. Olena Tyrell was one of the most fearsome characters in Game of Thrones. A brilliant strategist, a cynical plotter, and a devoted grandmother, she was a woman who'd do anything to protect her family and their interests. Case in point, her murder of Joffrey Baratheon at his wedding. In a deleted scene from Season 6, she discusses the Lannisters with her son, Mace Tyrell. After Mace has made Cersei's Master of Coin, he's evidently unable to see how he's being manipulated. But Olena sees exactly what's going on, and she's determined to keep Loras and Marjorie as safe as possible. Cersei Lannister sent you to Bravas to get you out of her way. 
and she sent the bloody king's guard to make certain you stayed there. The scene brings to light exactly how close Cersei's plan came to ending in failure, and how enormously the Tyrells would go on to lose in season 7, and thus how powerful Cersei truly is by the last season of the series. Though forces were arrayed on both the Tyrell and Lannister sides, it all came down to a game of wits between the Queen of Westeros and the Queen of Thorns. The dire wolves have always been more than pets. Their fates have foreshadowed and influenced the fates of the Stark children from the very beginning, from Lady's death and Sansa's subsequent suffering, to Grey Wind's mutilation and Rob's murder at the Red Wedding. In a deleted scene from Season 7, Jon gives Ghost an important task before he sets off to meet Daenerys. Keep Sansa safe. Ghost is essentially the only Stark direwolf left. Yes, there's still Nymeria, but that's a story for another day. The fact that Jon entrusted this job to Ghost is a sign of just how deeply he cares for Sansa. It also emphasizes how important Sansa, Arya, Jon, and Bran are to each other. Their strong alliance has survived that of the Lannisters, the Tyrells, and the Targaryens. Ghost is a part of Jon, or at least he used to be, before the King in the North up and ditched him in Season 8. You really do know nothing, Jon Snow. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about Game of Thrones are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.